Welcome to the final part of Build a Computer. We got there in the end. Not without its hitches, mainly with the video actually. Uh, so what was about an hour and a half's worth of video, mainly of my back and with incredibly obscure lighting as the sun kept coming in and going out and the camera's only got manual exposure on, uh, on video, it doesn't also expose. We've cut it down to six minutes or thereabouts, bit over. Um, of the highlights, the sound was dreadful, so we've got a voiceover. Let's see what happened. So right, we come now to see the case on the bench. It's all empty. First thing we do is install the power supply. There's a reason for this. We want to earth the, the case to avoid static problems, not using a wristband. Badly made wristband can be very dangerous. Is that uh, tying yourself to an electric chair? Right, here's the power supply going in. Well, me muttering about it first, of course, because, well, you know, the sound, the original sound quality was so poor. That, just explaining there why we should be putting the power supply in, which I've already done. This power supply normally goes in fan up, but because the case, or the, sorry, because the power supply is mounted to the bottom of the case, it goes in fan down, and there's a, a filter in there to capture dust and whatever else it might want to draw in. We then start screwing if you'll pardon the expression, and trying to find which screws are the right size, because they all look the same, but they're all very slightly different. Um, we're just sort of trying to mount the power supply to the case. The fans down, all the cables are tied back out of the way. And it's, it's actually quite a fiddly job, this one. Uh, this, this took quite a while. Uh, it was immensely fiddly, because it was a cheap case, so the holes didn't quite line up. They lined up well enough, but not perfectly so it's a little bit of jiggling over tightening there which is a bit silly Don't worry. and the, that's it that's the end of the screwing and the sun comes out which was just wrecked the exposure power supply in right so we flip the case around now and you can see there at the bottom it's nice and earthed and it needs to be because here comes the motherboard these things are of course, you know, they're not as bad as people make out, but they're still fairly slightly static sensitive. Now I've got to work out which way up it goes in. Well, that wasn't easy either. I mean, it's obvious which way up it goes in. You just don't think about it when you're doing it. And all the little bits come out the back. I made the mistake of not putting in the metal plate that secures the in-out ports at the rear. Uh, and uh, actually, that, was a, that took a long time to put in. It was a big fight. Now we come to the processor. Processor is the brains of the unit and they are fragile, they are prone to static, touching case again, trying to hoping that you know static will bleed through the, the powder coat. Um, they got thousands and thousands of little feet on them. Anyway, this was possibly one of the most expensive parts of the machine, and you can't see me put it in because the camera's behind me, because I've got nowhere to put a camera above, and even if I did my head would get in the way. It was incredibly easy. So you've got to line up hundreds of pins and literally you just put it in, drop it in, drop the clamp, and it's done. It's actually the easiest part of the whole job was putting in the central processor. We then had an hour fighting to put the cooling fan on, which you can see is on there now. The fact the motherboard had to come out to do that. Um, so the fan's in, fan's connected up, and I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just pointing at it. There you go. There's the cooling fan underneath that sort of big lump of aluminium, or on top of that big lump of aluminium. Uh, that's now bolted down very tightly on top of the processor with some heat compound. And the extractor for the case is just the right. I just pointed at it actually. And the memory is in. And I'm wondering what to do next apart from waffle on. Ah, yeah, I've got all these bits of wire that come out the case for the front panel and the lights. And the switch and the fans have got to be plugged in to the motherboard and all that sort of rubbish and it's a wonder where some of these bits go. I had quite a long wonder about that. Uh, I ended up consulting the internet at one point for certain bits but we'll come back to that. Uh, at the bottom left you can actually see the windscreen on the microphone which didn't mic particularly well. 
It's now upright and we're getting close. We've put in uh, a harvested hard drive, um, which is actually a solid state hard drive, just hanging there in the breeze for testing purposes. Above it, am um, I gonna to point to it? Yep, that's an optical drive that I nicked out of one of the old computers from the shop. And the graphics card, the red thing is in, that came out of this one's predecessor. I don't know where the keyboard came from. It says tiny on it. That is really ancient. That must be one of my father's. But it's a nice keyboard. It's got proper full-size keys. And that's about it. Power on. Fans go around. And actually nothing happened at this point. Fans went around and that was it. Because I've forgotten to plug in the supply for the central processor. Which was a bit embarrassing when I realised what I'd done, having spent half an hour mucking around with a BIOS and working out why it didn't start. I did that. It started straight away absolutely brilliant i think that now is almost it i don't want to move because it sounds will ruin the um the whatever this is voiceover i was happy with that um we got it going it's now all together and i am in fact editing this video on it well i don't know what you got out of that i i got a great deal of frustration but <laughs> such is life why do we start? Does it work? Yes. Is it any good? Well, I'm editing this on it. Would I do it again? Oh, you bet I would. Yeah, I seriously would. Uh, it, it's, uh, it was a fantastic experience. It was, it was frustrating in, in many ways, but not the ways you'd think. I mean, finally got it all together. I turned it on and bang, it worked. And it works really well. It's um, a lot faster than the old one. Uh, what used to take an hour and a half to render is now being rendered in about 12 minutes. So it's a heck of a time saving. It was built specifically for video editing uh, and stills, of course. And that's what I aim for. That's what I've got. And it was a lot cheaper than if I bought it in the shop. If I'd gone down to a shop and ordered a machine with a similar spec, I'd have got a whole load of stuff I didn't want, and that would have added to the price. It's the way to go. You build the machine for what you want it to do. If you just want a sort of typical home office type machine, yeah, go buy a £200 black box from Curry's. If you want something a bit special, either build it yourself or, or get someone to build it for you. Yeah, contact me. Uh, and you get what you want at far less than you would pay in in the local um, computer supermarket. Well worth it, great fun. And it's got my blood in it. Yep, it bit me. You can't see it now because it's healing up. It sliced me right up there, the little. Uh, so it's not for sale because it's contaminated goods. Nothing more I can say about it except that the rate of videos might go up now because I enjoy using it and it's no longer a chore. It's exciting work. And we'll see you again soon.